yes. Uh, my name's Priest, Martin Priest, Jordan Mead. Oh, yes, of course. It's good of you to meet me. How is Barry? Um, sir? Thank you. Sorry, but uh, he didn't really stand the chance. I'm afraid. Multiple injuries. Frankly, I'm surprised he hung on as long as he did. There uh, have to be a post mortem, of course. Merely as a matter of routine, you know. He never regained consciousness, so he did not suffer pain, I mean, if that helps. It doesn't much. Well, what can I say? This must be a terrible shock for you. I spoke to Mr. Cosgrove at your London office. Is that right, Mr. Cosgrove? When he called, he just said that Barry was critically ill. Well, that was the situation at the time. It was very sudden, I understand, but you were still on your way, in fact. But you couldn't have got here any quicker. Your brother was one of our finest men. Thank you. Terrible business, this. Terrible. Our project director is very cut up with what everybody is, naturally, goes without saying, but uh, he wants to pay his respects personally. Staying at Curian Palace Hotel. It's a damn shame. Damn shame. As I was saying, first class chap, Barry. Right spirit. Got the work moving, I can tell you. You can testify to that, eh, Martin? Yes, I certainly can. Mm. You got on so well with everyone. You could do with a few more like them. That's the truth. Yeah, it's an important project, this, you know. Quite a coup getting the contract, believe me. 
And your brother will be sadly missed. Not easily replaced. Men of his caliber are fairly thin on the ground. Yes, indeed. A credit to his firm. A great loss to his friends. And a credit to his family. And that's not a bad way to be remembered, is it? No, I suppose not. Now, uh, accommodation. Uh, we fixed you up, of course. Well, uh, we had made arrangements, but Mr. Collier tells me he's already booked into the Courier Palace. Oh? Yes, the company I work for made a reservation there. Ah, I see. Well, you'll be all right at the Courier. Comfortable billet, eh, hey, Martin? Very. Now, I, I know this must be very painful for you, but there are certain arrangements that have to be made. Uh, oh, no, I don't. Yeah. It goes without saying, of course, that Jordan Lee will fly your brother back to the UK at our expense. That's very good of them. No, it's the very least we could do. Tell me, is there a British cemetery on the island? Well, yes, there is, as a matter of fact, but naturally, I assume, well, surely your parents... Oh, no, they're dead. Oh. And there isn't anyone else, an aunt and uncle and some cousins, but they're in New Zealand. Well, in that case, it's up to you. Naturally, we'll go along with your wishes. Well, it's not as though Barry had any roots back in England. His job took him all over the place, so there's nowhere he could really call home, nowhere he belonged, and uh, he liked Cyprus. Told me so in his letters. And he's been here quite a while. No, oh, indeed. Well over a year. He was with you in the first survey, wasn't he, Martin? Yes, he was. He was on the project from the very beginning. And he has friends here? No, oh, many. Well, very well, then. Uh, leave it to me. Ah. Uh, day after tomorrow. What about the inquest? Well, that's a formality, just a formality. Day after tomorrow, then. The C of E, wasn't it? It wasn't anything, really. Oh. Well, I think that counts as... C of E. <sighs> Once again, my deepest sympathies, Mr. Collier. Tragedy. Tragedy. How did it happen exactly? I'm sorry? My brother, what happened exactly? You don't know. Didn't you tell me? Yes, of course, but... Uh, <clears throat> I couldn't fill in all the details. I thought it might be better if Mr. Collier had a word with... Ah, uh... Uh, yes, yes, you're right. Uh... Uh, Christina, I'd like to speak to Inspector Demos. An accident. Not anyway, that will be the coroner's verdict. He'll have no alternative. Accidental death. You doubt it? This stretch of road is a death trap, Mr. Collier. Eight people have died in crashes or in vehicles which went over the edge in the last six months. And twice that number have been injured. Your brother knew that. He had to. There has been enough publicity about it and there are warning signs. Still, he was driving recklessly, showing off. And as far as I'm concerned, that is closer to suicide than to an accident. He wasn't like that. Reckless, I mean. No. You have seen the skid marks. What would you say he was doing? 50, 60, and with such pens as these. He was a good driver, experienced. He could handle a car, any car. Oh, really? So will that be his epitaph, then? A tire blew, you said. Which, if he had not been speeding, would have been no problem. I'm sorry, Mr. Collier. I'm a policeman. I have been for 30 years. I deal in realities. Stupidity is one of them, as is death. I have some of your brother's personal effects. If you'll come to my office, I will give them to you. Tomorrow morning, perhaps. Okay. Mr. Priest, Inspector. It is not that I do not sympathize. It is just that I have seen too much of this. And it is all such a waste of living. And waste makes me angry.
These are the items your brother had on him when he was admitted to hospital. Uh, this watch, a wallet containing 11 pounds, diary, pen, checkbook, 862 million coin, and various keys. Thank you. Uh, do you want to check the items against the list? I don't think that would be necessary. Then if you will sign the receipt. So little to show, really. All in one envelope. Yes. But then it is only possessions we acquire in a lifetime, which can be weighed or valued. And things should never be seen as any man's true legacy or worth. Did you know my brother? I met him once, officially. Three months ago, a man from his section fell from a cliff while working and was killed. It was an accident. Oh, I thought you didn't believe in accidents. Of course I do, Mr. Collier. In that, which is truly accidental. But then I have to, don't I? You see, I come from a very large family. Thank you. Gallimera. Are you sure you want to have some of this? No, thank you. How did you get on with Inspector Demas this morning? Oh, it was quite simple. No complications? How do you mean? Oh, nothing really, just... You never know what people get up to sometimes. Things can become a bit involved. You mean Barry? I haven't had time to go through the stuff. There wasn't uh, much there, really, just uh, a diary and a few photographs. Oh, yes, Barry was pretty useful with his camera. Were they good? Yeah, and especially the girls. <laughs> the girls. Uh... Most of them, in fact. And a few... Uh, what looked like uh, something out of a museum. Oh, I'd like to see them sometime. I admired a lot of the stuff he took. Yeah. Look, uh, 
Will you excuse me? I've a lot to do. Yes, of course. <clears throat> Hellman, Eugene Hellman. Can you spare me a moment? Uh, my uh, my business associates, Mr. Travis and Mr. Olson. I'd very much like to talk to you, Mr. Collier, and I promise I won't keep you long. You see, I uh, I knew your brother. Oh, yes. Shall we sit over here? Barry. Yeah, I sure did. And more than just as an acquaintance, I like to think that we were friends. That's why I can't tell you how deeply grieved I am by what has happened. That's why I had to speak to you to offer my condolences. Thank you. A great loss. Now, what will you have? Tomato juice. Whatever you say. Tomato juice. Right, a tomato juice and a bourbon on the rocks. One bourbon on the rocks, one tomato juice. And uh, for your friends? Nothing. They're not drinking. Oh. Nuts? Olives? Crisps? I said nothing. Well, in that case, sir, they'll be served even quicker than this gentleman and yourself. Thank you. This is a very sad time for you, and, uh, and a difficult one, I'm sure. Is there anything I can do? That's very kind of you, Mr. Hellman, but I don't think so. Anything? Just name it. You were with him at the end? No, unfortunately, I was too late. No, I'm sorry. That's very sad. One bourbon on the rocks. One tomato juice. Yes, sir. So you have no idea if Barry said anything, any uh, last wishes, that kind of thing? Well, I'm told he never regained consciousness. That's tough. Still, maybe it was better that way. To Barry, a great guy. Thank you. How did you come to know my brother, Mr. Hellman? Well, we met very casually one day. I can't remember exactly where. Uh, water skiing, I think. Yeah, that's right, water skiing. You live on Cyprus? Oh, no, I'm just visiting. But I've been here a while. My yacht has moored off the nautical club. Barry never mentioned me when he wrote to you? No. Never a word, huh? Well, he was never a great one for writing letters. And when he did write, it was usually just a few lines, mm -hmm. you know. So you've no idea what he got up to out here, then? Sorry? The happy bachelor bit, you know, wine, women and song, all that sort of thing. Oh, I knew he was having a good time. He liked Cyprus. He sure as hell did. <laughs> it's a great spot. Yeah. The company he worked for, uh, Jordan Neve? Yes. Uh, are they treating you okay? Oh, yes, with every consideration. Good, good. That's the way it should be. But if you run into any problems, you let me know, huh? Thank you, but I don't think there'll be any. Well, perhaps not, but uh, still, you never know. Anyway, I'll give you a number where you can reach me by radio telephone, just in case. May I? Yes. No, well, I, I should think um, I've already got it in Barry's diary. His diary? You have it? Yes. Oh, of course. Personal effects. Well, it was among the things the police gave me. Hmm. Well, maybe you'll get a better idea of his life out here from there. No, I'm afraid not. It was just appointments, telephone numbers, nothing much else. Uh, it's that kind of diary. Oh. <laughs> the kind of diary I keep. Oh, the kind we all keep. <laughs> well, in case my number shouldn't happen to be in it, uh, here. All right, thank you. See, why don't you have uh, 
dinner with me on board the yacht one evening. We could talk some more. You'd That's, be very welcome. Uh, very kind of you, Mr. Hellman, but um, I'm not here for very long, and with the funeral tomorrow and all the formalities. Oh, and, sure, you know. sure, I understand. Well, Mr. Collier, I'm very grateful to you for giving me some of your time, and, uh, well, again, what can I say? A great guy. Well, it's nice to know Barry had such good friends. He was very important to me, and that's for sure. Well, maybe we'll meet again sometime. Yes, I hope so. Yes, it's very good. It's um, it's uh, unusual. It's the herbs. The herbs. Oh yes, those that are put in with the Worcester sauce. Just a sprinkling, you understand. But it is that which makes it a Haralambus special. Haralambus. That is my name. Sir. Oh, I see. Well, it's it's um, it's very good. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Collier.
Are you sure it was Collier who hit you? It had to be. There was no one else there. He was asleep, I thought, and he came up behind me. Then he dumped you in the car. Now, that's very interesting, isn't it? I mean, he wakes up, he finds friend Travis here, giving his room a going over, and then turns out the lights on him. Well, that's natural enough, providing you've got the nerve and the muscle. But what doesn't he do, huh? I mean, what would you expect a law-abiding citizen to do under those circumstances? Call the police. Exactly. So it would seem that I have misjudged him. The innocent-looking Mr. David Collier is sitting in on the game. And maybe holding a pretty good hand. Man that is born of woman has but a short time to live and is full of misery. He cometh up and is cut down like a flower. He fleeth as it were a shadow and never continueth in one stay. In the midst of life we are in death. Of whom may we seek for succor but thee, O Lord, who for our sins are justly displeased? Yet, O Lord, God most holy, O Lord most mighty, O holy and most merciful Savior, deliver us not into the bitter pains of eternal death. Thou knowest, Lord, the secrets of our hearts. Shut not thy merciful ears to our prayer, but spare us, Lord, most holy, O God most mighty. O holy and merciful Savior, thou most worthy judge eternal. For as much as it hath pleased Almighty God of his great mercy to take unto himself the soul of our dear brother here departed, we therefore commit his body to the ground. Earth to earth, 
ashes to ashes, dust to dust. In sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life. Well, through our Lord will he Jesus do? Christ. Yes, he he'll do. Body, he'll do very nice. like unto his glorious body, according to the mighty working whereby he is able to do. Well, thank you for lunch. Oh, the least I could do. Thank you for everything. Well, as you said, it's what Barry would have wanted. I'm sure of that. Yeah. Uh, what time are you thinking of going over to Barry's place tomorrow? Right? Early, straight after breakfast. How far is Paphos? It's about an hour. I'll pick you up. Shall I drive you over? Oh, don't bother. I'll take a taxi. You sure? No trouble. I'm positive. Uh, I'll probably stay there for a while. Overnight, anyway. There'll be quite a bit to sort out, I expect. Well, if there's anything else I can do, give me a call, right? Right. I'll see you again before you go back to England. Yes, and thank you. All right, till then. time for you, Mr. Collier. Ah, uh, no. Strange, isn't it? Death is a journey which is so much harder for the living to bear than for those who have to embark on it. But then perhaps it is because the dead do not look back. And why should they? For them there is no longer any past. Haron waits to ferry them to a new future. And to such interesting company. You're a philosopher. Oh, not really. A realist. Believe me. May I suggest, sir, uh, that you enjoy your drink over there? There is someone who wishes to speak to you. Who? Who? Someone you should listen to. Someone who has been waiting a long time. May? No, what? David Collier? Yes. You wanted to speak to me? Please sit down. Thank you. What can I do for you? You are a man, I think, who values the truth. Well, uh, I like to think so. Well, then it is more a question of what I can do for you. There is something that I have to tell you about your brother. Did you know him, then? You could say that there was a very special relationship between us. Oh, I see. Uh, what's your name? Helen. And what is it you have to tell me? Oh, if it's if it's personal, if it's uh, it something... concerns his death. His death. Yes. You have to know it was not an accident. Your brother was murdered. Murdered. That's ridiculous. It was an accident. Inspector D must tell me so himself. He's quite certain of that. Perhaps. But just the same, what I am telling you is the truth. I don't believe it. It can't be. But it is. Look, um, you said yourself that you were very close, you and Barry. Well, isn't it possible Mr. that... Mr. Collier, uh... do I strike you as being a hysterical woman? In any way, unbalanced? No, no, but what you're suggesting is... It is not a suggestion. It's the truth. No, but it's, it's impossible. Barry murdered? Why? For what possible motive? Can you tell me that? And who by? Someone may want to see another dead for many reasons. All I am saying is that he was killed. Not that I knew who killed him. So you've no idea, is that it? Your brother was murdered. That's all I'm saying. And you can prove it? No, not at this moment. Then it's not a fact. Best it's a theory and a fantastic one at that. But it's the truth. So what did the police say when you went to them with this truth of yours? I have not been to the police. Why not? Because 
because before doing anything else, I wanted to talk to you. Really? Or was it because you know that without any evidence... But uh... there is evidence. Well, just a second ago you said... Uh... I said I could not prove it, and that is so. But there is evidence. Evidence that I think will do much to convince you. And if you will come with me, I will show it to you. <sighs> Mr. Collier, just allow for the possibility, however far-fetched it may seem to you, that what I am telling you is the truth. Would you not then want to see your brother's murderer punished? Well, yes, of course. Then come with me. All right. Wait for two minutes, and then follow me. Go out of the hotel, turn left, and walk along the road. Presently, I will pick you up. Driving for almost an hour. Not far now. Wait here. My brother gave this to me the night before he had his accident. He was very nervous and told me not to say anything to anybody about it. Open it. Swiss francs. In sterling, a little over 50,000 pounds. Now, how do you suppose that as construction manager on a project came by that sort of money? and in foreign currency. I can't imagine. 
There could be a perfectly acceptable explanation. This doesn't prove that he was murdered. But at least you no longer find the possibility so fantastic. Is that not so? <sighs> We'd better take this to Inspector Demas. Yes, you do that. Here, take my car. Uh, wait! You must come with me. No, I cannot. I cannot become involved. 